Anma Talks is an initiative for sharing knowledge between students, staff and management of the Nordic and Baltic Academies for Higher Music Education and anyone else interested. Welcome to this 14th edition, Anma Talks Musicians Health, Building a Foundation for Sustainable Careers. All right, welcome to the last Anma Talk uh, of the season. My name is Siri Storheim and together with Camilla Overgaard, I am planning uh, these Anma Talks. Anma is the Association of Nordic and Baltic Music Conservatories, Music Academies. Um, I'm representing here with my mummy uh, coffee mug. And today we have a very important and exciting topic, which is musicians' health. And we have two really interesting presentations. We have Elena Kivinuk, who is a psychologist at the Estonian Academy of Music and Theatre. She's also involved with the Estonian think tank PASI, uh, which aims to raise the awareness of mental health issues. She has a background in psychology and performance psychology, and she works daily as a psychological counselor with musicians. And we also have uh, Kari Arnason from Iceland. He is unfortunately not able to join us today. He is currently in Greece with um, the Icelandic national under 21 handball team. And he had a conflict with his schedule, but he has kindly um, recorded his presentation for us, which we will play. So we will begin with his presentation on the physical aspect of musicians health, and then we will give the, the floor to Elena, who will talk about mental health, and then we will open up for questions um, at the end. And just so everyone knows, this session is being recorded. So if you want to ask a question but not be recorded, you're welcome to write it in the chat. You're also welcome to just write questions in the chat as we go along, and then we will get to them at the end. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, talk about uh, musicians' health. Uh, my talk today is titled The Musical Athlete, or if you fair enough to play. My name is uh, Kaur Elmerum, and I'm a physiotherapist from Iceland and a clinical specialist in orthopedic physiotherapy. I would like to thank the organizers, Camilla and Siri, for, <clears throat> for offering me to come here and talk to you today. I'm very sorry that I was not able to join you guys live, but my miscalculation of the time difference between uh, Central European time and the local time here in Athens in Greece, where I'm actually right now, was a, yeah, was a bit of a problem. But I hope that this recording of the talk will will uh, will do for us today. So uh, I just want to introduce myself a bit before we start. Like I said, uh, my name is Kaur Eldersson. I'm a, a sports and orthopedic physiotherapist from Iceland. Uh, I did my master's degree in performing arts medicine from the University College London in 2016. And I'm currently a PhD student at the University of Iceland, where my research focus is on shoulder injuries in handball players. Uh, I've been working as a physio for the last 10 years in, in various places within the healthcare system. But uh, and um, now I'm actually I'm taking a bit of a break from from the private clinic where I've been working for the last four years or so. So my current clinical work is is mainly based around working with the Iceland Symphony Orchestra and the under 21 male Icelandic national handball team. And that is actually the reason why I am in Greece right now, because the uh, handball, national handball team is playing at, at the World Cup. But I've been working with the Iceland Symphony Orchestra since 2016 as their kind of go-to uh, and, and touring physio. Uh, we have done various things together. I joined them while the orchestra goes on tour, and so far we have done four tours together. We went to Japan in 2018, then in 2019, uh, Austria and Germany, UK tour 2020, and another UK tour in 2023. 
Uh, we've also done uh, some on-site uh, clinics at Harpa, where the uh, the concert hall where the symphony symphony is located, and some kind of uh, educational sessions with with members of the orchestra as well. So I was thinking about <coughs> using this opportunity to give you some idea behind the philosophy that I use when it comes to working with with musicians. So my background comes both from music and sports, and um, many, many people think that these two groups of people are quite different, but I'm going to argue that they are they are not different. They are very much very much alike. And, and um, I think you, you could actually say that musicians and athletes are just two subgroups from the same larger group. Uh, in my mind, musicians are nothing but athletes, but in their own unique sport. So uh, they have to deal with their unique things as, as many other athletes who play you know, rather specific sports have to do as well. But if we look at things, a few things that these two groups have in common, uh, both groups, they practice and perform almost daily. They often continue to play despite the presence of injuries and uh, they live in a very competitive world. Uh, this often just someone waiting at the sideline waiting for you to uh, make a mistake and steal your position in the team or, or, or in the orchestra. So both groups need to deal with high physical and mental load. And there's very often uh, very little time for rest. Uh, some musicians, like you know, if you if we take about take uh, the sports for example first, you know we have off season, we have pre season, then we have the season, and and but for musicians there's often no off season, no pre season. There's just uh, ongoing season. Um, and uh, if we th think about the pressure as well, both groups have to deal with high amount of external pressure and internal as well, from fans, critics, and often just from themselves, and the rate of overuse injuries is often high. And if we think about the musicians now, and one can one can ask oneself, why are musicians dealing with this high prevalence of overuse injuries? And there's one question that almost always comes up when I'm working with musicians, and that's simply the question. Are you fit enough to play the game? Do you have the, the uh, physical capabilities to tolerate the playing load, the amount of playing, and the type of music that you that you're playing? Uh, because it's not about just playing the game. We need to be able to play the game and tolerate it without kind of uh, jeopardizing our, our our physical and mental health while while doing it. And I like to take string players, for example, here, uh, because yeah, I, I, I sometimes call the string players uh, shoulder marathon runners. And kind of the large majority of my work with, with, for example, the Iceland Symphony Orchestra is with string players. And if we, if we kind of break it down what string players actually need to do from kind of the uh, physical aspect what they are doing they are simply holding their arms in front of them for a very long time so we can then think and and ask ourselves okay what are the um, kind of demands what do we what do we need to be able to do to be taught to to hold the arms in front of our body for a long time we need to have muscle strength we need to have muscle endurance in the shoulders and, and the and the upper back and 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 in many cases, string players who are dealing with 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 overuse injuries simply lack muscle strength and muscle endurance, because otherwise they they wouldn't be dealing with these kind of kind of injuries. So uh, to keep things simple, the magic solution. If we have, if we have one, and I believe that we actually do, the magic solution in in the case of overuse injuries for 
musicians is simply strength training because it can't go wrong getting strong as as a one British colleague of mine there's a phrase that he, he made famous but it's simply true you know the everything will become so much easier if we have adequate strength and muscle endurance in the muscles that we are constantly using while, while playing and um, so my main emphasis while working on musicians working with musicians is simply introducing them to the positive side effects of strength training and uh, again the string players are, are, are a very good example here because if you if you are doing exercise and when and you're holding a three or four kilo dumbbell you know in front of your body and you do it repeatedly over time you know you will simply get stronger and 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 the uh, what will happen over time is that the weight of the instrument the weight of the bow and the weight of your own arms will decrease and and then and, and you will kind of be able to tolerate it tolerate it better and um this uh, people here on, on on the photo here this these are actually members of the Iceland Symphony Orchestra, and there has been fantastic change over the last few years where people in the orchestra, they have become more aware of the importance of staying physically fit. And they actually, I think there may be 15 or 20 people who uh, go regularly to a, a local gym and they work out together and they call themselves SinfoFit. Uh, and... Uh, also, I've been kind of using every opportunity that I get with with your orchestra to to, to kind of speak the language of, of of strength training and make them realize how uh, how good it is for them. And here are just a few examples of of what members of the orchestra have said after they've been doing lifting weights for for a long period of time. Uh, decreased tension while playing. I'm now stronger than the pain. I feel increased work capacity while playing to, both during rehearsals and concerts. Everything is easier. And two of my most favorite ones, uh, one string player said, said to me on our last tour, I've been working out so much that I don't need you anymore. And the other one said, after I start lifting weights, it is so much easier to hold the instrument. Very, very positive, positive comments. So, but, you yeah, know, and, and, if you ask, I'm, I have to admit that I'm very biased towards strengthening because, you know, it makes basically everything, everything easier. It's always positive to have enough meat on the bones, like we say. But strength training is, is not the only, only thing that we need to think about because load management is absolutely a key factor when it comes to musicians' health. And this uh, concept that I'm going to introduce to you today is called acute versus chronic workload ratio. And this is actually what we have to think about because the biggest reason why people come to the clinic with overuse injuries is simply that they have done too much over too little time. Well, that's why it's good to kind of keep this, this ratio between the acute and chronic workload in mind. So the definition of the acute workload is the workload for the last seven days. And the definition of the chronic workload is the average workload over the previous four weeks or 28 days. So the ratio can't be too high. You know, our acute workload can't be too much compared to what we have been doing over the last four weeks or so. It needs to be in a, in, a, in a healthy in a healthy balance because otherwise you know our the the risk of getting overuse injuries just tends to tends to increase and then um, it basically doesn't matter how fit we are if our load management is not good enough if the acute if the spike in acute load is too high too rapid there are always more chances of us dealing with Overuse injuries as as a coincidence as a, a consequence. Uh, 
and uh, a part of you know, the load management is also uh, thinking about the floor and and the ceiling effect. So basically, if we think about, if we take for example, uh, we start we are starting to rehearse a particular piece. The floor is is where we start, and the ceiling is the performance where we perform the piece. And um, so we want to kind of go to, from the floor to the ceiling as quickly as possible, but we need to kind of be aware of that if we do it too quickly, our chances of, of dealing with the overuse injuries might be might be increased. But the goal of, of, of strength training is basically to raise the floor. So we are more able to deal with these rapid spikes in load. And so, and by the and by that kind of minimize our our risk of dealing with with overuse injuries. So it's super important to think about load management alongside uh, physical work like 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 strength training. But load management also maybe just means lifestyle management. Uh, I was at the conference in in Oslo in Norway in September last year. There was a nice uh, panel discussion about all these kinds of habits and, and things in the culture uh, in various music schools. And there was this young woman giving a talk, and she, I think she was the kind of uh, president of the student council in the Norwegian Academy of Music. And, and she was talking about how weird all these kind of habits that musicians have and how they basically don't make sense when it comes to kind of uh, focusing on maintaining just well-being, both physical and mental. And she said, she, she said this thing that I have been using as, as, a, as a quote in many of my lectures, that if you don't function as a human being, you don't function as a musician. And she was kind of talking about, it was so weird why, how many musicians tend to uh, stop doing some of, some of the most just basic human things like eating, sleeping, meet, meeting friends, working out when they are under high 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 workload. And I always find it super interesting that I see. Oh, I often see it as well uh, in my in my pay, in my clients that when they have super much many things to do, they tend to drop everything that basically makes them able to tolerate this period of, of high load. They, you know, they stop working out, they stop eating, they stop sleeping, they stop meeting friends and all these things that kind of, because if you maintain these things, you're more likely to be able to tolerate this workload period in a healthier way and come out kind of stronger instead of kind of just, you know, trying to, to empty the gas tank completely, if, if we can say so. And that's the reason why I often say that when we're kind of talking about load management and how to deal with, with uh, various uh, periods of, of, of high load, that we have three natural pain medications. We have sleep, exercise, and so social interaction with friends and family. Because we need to cultivate well-being. It is uh, an ongoing process, and it's nothing not, not, not easy, but you know the, the reward is always... It's always worth it. So, if we if we if we wrap it up, this short talk about uh, physical health among musicians, uh, the world of music and sports have a lot in common. Way more things than kind of one can think when we look at them from the outset. And the key question when it comes to musicians' health: Are you simply fit enough to play the game? And the, the magic solution is strength training. Strength training is absolutely a game changer when it comes to increase your ability to tolerate the playing load. And load and, and lifestyle management is also super important as we talked about and kind of thinking about, okay, how does my schedule look uh, two months and a half time? Am I uh, enough prepared? And, and don't forget to think about these things, simple things like sleep, social interaction, nutrition, rest and everything, because maintaining physical well-being is, is hard work. So guys, uh, thanks for the opportunity again to come here and talk to you. I hope uh, this talk uh, will give you some ideas about what you can do to 
increase your your uh, physical capabilities and physical health. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Kari, who um, is unfortunately not here to answer questions, but you are all welcome to write any reflections in the chat, thoughts or reflection on his talk. And we will continue with Elena. Yeah, hello from my side and thank you for this uh, privilege to um, uh, uh, share some of my thoughts uh, related to mental health, uh, especially in the music uh, uh, field. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, yeah, it's really, uh, it's really a shame that uh, Kara is not here. I had already like so many thoughts and questions and and uh, realizations that uh, I understand that this strength uh, training is uh, undervalued. However, it's really difficult to. I think it like to incorporate that into the into the daily life of the musician. So, or I was like thinking as well that if uh, in case they have the tours, that do they start with a general like with a common strength training, or how does this practicality uh, looks like? Anyway, I will go um, from the uh, physical side uh, to the mental health uh, side, and uh, and that's also really connected to the physical bodies as well. Uh, we know that people are like uh, holistic; that there is this more and more people are supported by the holistic approach. That it's uh, and we know that whatever happens in people's lives, uh, that it's also affecting their performance as well. Uh, yeah, and I will uh, share some um, uh, presentation as well, and I have around uh, 20 minutes, and um, uh, I start with a kind of a more or less practical exercise, and this is called like a practic uh, practice, uh, practicing gratitude, and uh, just where you are there, and uh, feel free and look around and find three things that you are grateful for. Of course, there are no right or wrong answers. It's just like the gratitude exercise. When you feel like, you can also write them down in the chat box, but mainly it's like your own personal exercise. Name or think of three things that you're grateful for. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, if you did the exercise uh, alongside, uh, and uh, um, there is, um, as just as I said, that there is no like right or, or wrong uh, answer, but it's also like it's good to reflect or understand like how easy it is to find these things um, at this uh, day that we already shared with the team about the weather conditions and uh, I understand that these are quite um, different. So one of the thing is that uh, here as well in Estonia that uh, weather is very sunny and very warm. And this is also one of the reason uh, to be grateful for or one of the things to be grateful for. And uh, why I always offer this opportunity is to have uh, more of a like positive outlook. We know from the brain uh, uh, science or neuroscience that brain has this negativity bias. And uh, it's naturally built this way that uh, we always try to find the negative things first and or, or find these things which are threatening or somehow far harmful or not really doing uh, good for us. So one of the way how to practice or train your brain to be to have more like a varied, <coughs> a varied outlook. Uh, in life is to find some positive things and finding or naming these things that you are grateful for. It's uh, it's one way how to practice your brain to have more um, varied uh, perspective in your daily life. And uh, in case that 
this is really a bad day for you and it's really difficult to find these positive things or, or things that you're grateful for, that's also um, a notion or that's also the thing that you can notice that, ah, oh, that today this is really like a, uh, this kind of day when it's really difficult to find these things um, uh, to be grateful for. Uh, recently, I read the study on the gratitude when it's also said, and I said that this is, or, or I thought that this is also very relevant to the musician's life as well, that um, uh, that uh, in the teaching or in the learning process, having this kind of uh, mindset uh, already, like in the beginning of the learning process, having this mindset of gratitude, that it's really beneficial for the whole um, practice session or the whole learning process as well, that this is a good way how to open up the room or open up the setting there that I, even before I start practicing, even before I start the, uh, this um, uh, uh, short maybe breathing exercises, what I usually do before the practice, but I start with uh, the noticing these things that I'm grateful for. For example, in Estonian, in the Estonian Academy, we have uh, very often um, this lack of um, uh, space, lack of rooms where people can practice. And it's also causing like lots of stress for the people that when they find uh, rooms and I can imagine that this is causing this extra uh, stress for them that are uh, oh, that now I found the room and it's too short of the time and there is already like this extra tension going on. So one of the ways how to address that is somehow restart your mindset and think that oh now I have this room and uh, there are like three things that I'm grateful for and this is already like wiring the brain to uh, be more efficient in the learning process as well. One of the ways how to use this gratitude practice in your uh, in your daily life. Uh, yeah, uh, so I will share some of the presentation before I, uh, like, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, do you understand what I'm talking more or less? Yeah, good, thank you. So I will share some of the slides and uh, I have very like closely related to the uh, as uh, Gary's presentation was as well to have it more having this like a mentally fit musician perspective and we already did this the uh, gratitude exercise and uh, just shortly wanted to introduce uh, uh, the role of the psychologist that I'm also serving here at the Estonian uh, Academy of uh, Music and Theatre that uh, I offer a uh, psychological counseling and I'm using like brief therapy we don't have the uh, like a regular checkup or, or check-in sessions with the with all the students that I know sometimes it is uh, uh, there are uh, these opportunities but um, I'm using more of this brief therapy approach and my background is also sports and uh, uh, sports psychology. So I've uh, studied also in the Nordic uh, University. I studied in Uvascula in Finland and studied uh, sports psychology there. So um, uh, so I also very much echo with uh, Gary that there is a... I'm not really sure that if the musicians and the athletes are like in the same subgroup, but there are many similarities and, and many things that are very valuable and specific in this uh, in these areas so i offer also uh, professional development uh, sometimes like career uh, counseling or or uh, uh, or like more of this um, uh, these perspectives uh, and then i also serve the ro serve as a role of the equal treatment uh, officer so in case that there are some maybe doubts about the harassment or maybe there are some situations which are not really going well in the in different perspectives or people are feeling that they are not really treated well then uh, there is this opportunity to come to me and and uh, report the the situation um, yeah and um, i also wanted to share some of the moments or, or aspects which are really common for the musicians um, uh, and in the musician's daily life, in the musician's performance as well. I'm using or referring here the UK-based uh, organization Mind, and they have developed some of the, some of the materials uh, for the music industry. 
and uh, and probably you also can relate to some of the challenges that uh, one of the pressure which is also affecting mental health is like working late and having this kind of unpredictable working hours that sometimes there is this uh, uh, I don't know, gig or some kind of the performance that people need to go. There is no um, uh, information how long does it take or or how is the transport is going to be organized or or many things which are kind of like unpredictable. Also, it's like the working late. It's also working with the during the weekends and that's also affecting the general well-being of the musician. Very often it's also like uh, the pressure is from the frequent traveling, but I also know for for many musicians that's also really this appealing part as well, that it's really the thing that they like about that they move in different uh, international contexts and, and during the corona pandemics it was a really difficult times that uh, people could not travel so often as they as they wanted. Uh, then uh, drug and alcohol uh, abuse and uh, this is I think this issue or the challenge it's more common than we actually want to admit it's sometimes uh, it's more maybe hidden it's not so um, visible um, and and it's and there is a lot of like stigma around these topics that people don't really uh, talk very openly about their their struggles related to drugs and alcohol and and that's uh, but from the mental health specialist side i also want to say that uh, both like drug and alcohol abuse is considered as as mental health um, uh, issue or mental health challenge so that this can be one of the hint as well that people are not really doing well uh, mental health wise when they over abuse either drugs or alcohol then the competitive competitive environment that was also Gary also referred to that and probably you know all that this is the musicians uh, environment is super competitive i like to bring this uh, uh, example from my own um, uh, story that when i first uh, uh, got um, the job from this uh, for this uh, 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 as a position for the psychologist at the uh, academy then the, one of the first comments i was like walking down the corridor and one of the first comments that my one of my colleagues said that oh welcome you you won the competition and it was like uh, and it was a very uh, uh, that really made me think that oh that this is like a, this is a very specific environment that it's, people are addressing that I'm the new person there in the in the working environment and then I want to address that ah oh, that I won the competition so it's very also uh, makes me sometimes think that is it always uh, beneficial but also I understand that this is a a long journey in the music uh, industry as well like how to um, maybe uh, how to uh, make the pressure not so uh, not so high in this environment and also the toxic criticism it's sometimes um, uh, of course we say that uh, feedback is very important for your performance and uh, in order to do well that you need uh, good feedback but sometimes this criticism is uh, uh, is also like too critical uh, maybe sometimes like poorly delivered and very often this criticisms uh, that it's uh, it hits the musician's identity and it really raises the questions that that am I even like good enough to continue or or how do I really deal with that uh, kind of um, uh, criticism that it seems so harsh. Uh, then there is this uh, for the musicians, it's very often for the performing musicians that there is a pressure to be positive and entertaining that nobody wants to look at the, like a sad musician on the stage that it really needs to bring good and positive uh, emotions for the audience. Uh, sometimes it's said that this pressure is also from, from the loneliness and isolation. Um, I think sometimes it can be also in the families when the music field is not so incorporated, then it's really difficult that parents are not maybe supporting enough that when the, when the young musician feels that they have this calling for a bit to become the musician. 
And finally, one very important aspect, and probably you also uh, have heard about it, is this on poster syndrome, which is constantly taking taking this uh, or putting this pressure to p practice more, work harder, and uh, perform better. So that this is um, called like a fraud. Uh, fraud syndrome, that there is this self-talk that I'm a fraud and soon it will become obvious that it's uh, uh, people have their inner thoughts that uh, actually I am not so good than people think and and um, and this creates lots of uh, uh, like inner criticism but also it offers like a, a extra pressure and and uh, yeah sometimes it's not really beneficial i would say in a mild word way uh, yeah so i will move on and uh, want to say like related to the mental health wise i just wanted to offer this uh, model for stress management which is uh, also uh, which is suggested to use more for the for the um, uh, uh, creative uh, industries and maybe you know that as well but it's um, I always like that uh, it uh, balances or tries to find both positive and negative uh, parts or aspects so that um, this is called like job demands and resources model and the invitation is to think of your uh, job your role your position in the music field as there are like uh, things that uh, job demands from you but also there are some job resources or job positives that uh, this job really uniquely brings to you as well so the job demands can be like the uh, things that require this physical or psychological effort or skills that uh, for example it can be like this high pressure or it can be like very emotional demands. People sometimes share that they really like playing the music, but it's really difficult to manage like either in this um, with the uh, relationships or, or uh, between the musicians or, or sometimes the, I don't know, the learning uh, context is also not so friendly or, or and this also creates this extra uh, pressure or can be this demand uh, demand for the job. Uh, the tight timelines uh, or sometimes they uh, there are some seasons which uh, seems to be like it's more busy or or not so busy so that's also um, a demand or poor relations at work and then there are always there are job positives or job resources or these aspects that uh, job really offers and uh, also playing music can offer like really unique things for you that you want to uh, that you want to, uh, that uh, provides you this very special uh, feeling and this special achievement or, or the special realization that this is your thing, what you do. And so that this aspects could be like either this functional in achieving goals that I will re reach the new goals and reach the standards. Uh, that uh, this uh, job positive can be can reduce job demands and it can stimulate personal growth learning and development and and very often people uh, realize uh, just recently I had the conversation with an experienced uh, musician who said that when I was younger then I realized that I uh, that once I will be good enough, now I realize that oh, that is always like the constant growth and learning and development, and this is the thing that I really truly enjoy in the music field. So here, the examples can be like career opportunities, uh, super like the coaching process, audiences reaction, uh, some autonomy, or like making uh, choices within my own uh, job area. Uh, and sometimes people uh, realize that this job demand, like being a musician, that demands like really uh, constant practicing. But this uh, job positive can be that uh, the way how audience uh, reacts, this is so it always like um, uh, uh, weighs uh, up the the difficulties in the in this uh, work field. Uh, I don't know if you know the this um, model have you heard of the model before 
uh, Camilla is uh, reacting that no, but I mean, I mean, like uh, time wise, we have a couple of minutes. I think we can have the just, I think three minutes is uh, just to have this kind of a seed in your thought and um, having this uh, uh, small practice, like an exercise, like I would take three, I would say three minutes. If you have the possibility, you can write it down or you can just look outside and think what are the things that your uh, job or, or your position in the music field, what it uh, demands from you and what are the job positives, which this this your role or, or your uh, work uh, in your field that this is so unique, which really provides this to you. There are no right or wrong answers. Again, you don't need to. Uh, share that, but it's just like your own, like an invitation to like your individual reflection. Uh, I will uh, uh, mute my microphone and give three minutes. Uh, do you mind if we continue? It was officially two minutes, but it seemed maybe I was like, um, or maybe there is this uh, uh, good opportunity to move on. That um, and uh, and again, here is this uh, in this kind of this exercise. There is this invitation to um, turn the focus also to the positive things, and uh, we know from the brain science that it's uh, um, again with the high stress situations when there is a. Uh, when there is um, very like demanding tight lines or or, or really difficult uh, uh, tight uh, deadlines or or there is a, a very like a high stress situation or or for example when there was this just uh, the Ukrainian war uh, broke out it was like uh, people very often shared that this uh, stress is uh, uh, high and very difficult to. Um, uh, cope with and we know that with high stress situation memory is not working well 
and and that's also very um, important to keep in mind that uh, during these high stress situations, uh, uh, body doesn't uh, doesn't even like remember what I usually do that in order to keep my mental health uh, well. And uh, as Kari also mentioned here, that it's very uh, important to keep your uh, main things uh, in order. I also say that in high stress situation, you have to pay like extra attention. What is the, what are the things that I'm doing in order to uh, keep my stress or, or keep my body well, like to eat well, sleep well. And I will uh, share some of the ideas here as a, as a final also take home messages. Uh, that uh, really like back to the basics, uh, thinking like how to sleep, uh, smart. This uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, sleep. Not I'm like sleeping myself, but it's like a really important topic, and I could have the uh, whole session on the the importance of sleep and how sleep uh, uh, offers the ways to improve the performance as well. But uh, I want to address here or focus here that uh, sleeping smart, that not just. Um, uh, sleeping uh, anytime I'm getting sleepy, but really being very strategic with the naps and and with uh, uh, sleeping in uh, general. So eating well as well here and uh, we uh, we more and more we get these studies that mental health is very uh, closely connected to the gut health. So that it's eating well and well balanced food. It's uh, it's really um, important. And this is again it's, this is one thing which is in high stress situation we try to we, we tend to like just have a burger and let it go but it's uh, really important to understand that when i already see i can foresee that okay the next two weeks it will be really stressful i can already prepare myself i can already uh, bring some food and maybe freeze some of the food and and uh, make some preparations so that i can maintain my my diet uh, of course, being active, uh, of course, I'm a huge fan of physical activity and especially like dancing, but it's um, uh, uh, these days we know from the research that also like being active, like using more stairs and um, whether, I don't know, like washing the dishes or, or cleaning the uh, room sometimes that this is also very beneficial and just walking uh, can be very beneficial so that not to overdo uh, to visit the gym or 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 and being stressed about it that oh, I missed the gym again, but rather being active in all the other possible ways as well. That can be very beneficial. Then um, uh, journaling. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that I just wanted to check the question. I will come back that to, to that. Then I offer the idea of journaling, like um, just writing down some of the thoughts or whatever that comes to the comes to mind that uh, it helps to reduce anxiety. It helps to improve sleep uh, and also reflecting your own performance. And uh, the third uh, take home message here is to be kind. Also thinking of this highly competitive and very critical or like this sometimes toxic environment that uh, still choosing to be kind, uh, be, being kind to your wider community, to yourself as well, and to your rivals, in case that's also somehow applicable. And finally, practicing gratitude, again, taking this time and realize that what are the things that I'm grateful for. Yeah, so I will end the presentation um, uh, this official part here, I just want to um, say that uh, I have added to the presentation that some of the links related to the mental health in the music field. Uh, luckily, that um, this is a privilege that we have had so many different uh, materials, uh, which is especially focusing on the well-being of the musicians, so that I leave here some of the links and also uh, some Australia-based <coughs> uh, Australia-based uh, links as well. Uh, yeah, so thank you for this time and uh, we will have some time for the questions and discussion. Thank you so much, Elena. I can surely recognize myself in a lot of the things that you talk about. Uh, it's very interesting.
we have time for some questions and you can either write in the chat or you can use the hand raise function and ask the question or if you have comments that's also totally fine okay we have one raised hand so please go ahead lisa hi thank you for a great presentation um my name is lisa ford i play i'm a principal horn player in gothenburg and teach at the music of here in in, in Goth, gothenburg at the academy of music and dance and um i think everything that i i think everything that you guys talked about is is actually completely applicable we're lucky in gothenburg in the orchestra that we've had both physical therapists and uh, massage people working with us for many years. So if anyone wants more information about that from us, you can, it's just please pass on that, that you, you're, you're both on totally the right track. And then the last, since the pandemic, we've been getting, um, finally gotten management to understand that we also need mental health support for performance pressure. Uh, and uh, we've gotten to, have sessions with uh, several very good, very good psychologist, mental training experts. One of which is Dinka Vlatkovic, who's a psychologist and a viola player. And Barbara, hi Barbara, Barbara and I are working on trying to get a department at the school to there. There was uh, 15 years ago there was a, a a course in these activities that has been Barbara has been keeping the physical side alive and I've been trying to keep the, the mental training side alive and now we're trying to get there to be a more structured format for that at school so that the students can be exposed to everything and then they can pick and choose what they want to focus on in different in different semesters. But what I also wanted to ask you guys is like how can we get this also to the teachers. Because sometimes you find that the students that are, they get the most damaged are the ones who have teachers that are super, of course, ambitious, which we all are, but teach in such a way that is not that helpful to the sensitive students. If anyone has any thoughts on that, I'd love to hear it because that's where I think we need to go also with this. Yeah, I should have warned uh, in all the questions and answers. I'm very vague and also like being a bit like scientist in my head. So I don't know the right answer. But, and uh, and it's very it's a really like relevant uh, question as well. And and um, as I've I've uh, studied the um, uh, some of the, like, the harassment uh, related situations, I also realized that it's really difficult to change the mindset of the teacher, that it's uh, because like their experience is always uh, going against them, that it's um, uh, that they know like in the past they had this experience that it has worked and so that they have developed this behavior or this approach and and the way how they teach has their their teaching philosophy and they are so certain that they are right so that it's really difficult to to somehow convince or persuade or or invite them to question that are you sure that this is the <laughs> good way how to continue so it's uh it's really difficult process with the, the teachers. Uh, luckily or fortunately, I can say from our academy that we have very many good examples and our academy is very small. And so that it's very, our professors and teachers are very like individual based and they, they are really like approaching each student with their own unique um, specialities. But I totally agree with the, the necessity that we need to make the change in the teaching culture that's yeah we have six minutes i think it's not enough there is a question with uh, uh for, uh, related to this um, trusting uh, uh and and this feeling like feeling na naked in the skin uh i just want to approach maybe here also like from the positive psychology side that there is this uh, uh, approach like in this um, what is the solution focused um, brief therapy there is this um, question that uh, uh, or, or invitation that they search into the times when things went well 
or when there was this the, some kind of a time period when I felt better or or when I, I when there were like good examples in my history and really zoom into these good uh, examples or good uh, moments and see what was there. And very often I also work with the musicians when there is a uh, that when they share that ah oh, that I have so much stress and so many things that they all, this is all like overwhelming, and then sometimes they go back to their like good experiences when um, when they also like realize that they managed stress well that when they went to the gym or when they had more like balanced diet and that's already like a hint there that's so that they uh, start maybe exercising or doing some kind of like a regular walking um, tours around the community or or just eating better and that's already like their their hint there that I can that from the good experiences I can bring some of the lessons alongside and this one other approach can be used all right we have time for one more question or comment if someone have one this is your moment. Sorry, I don't find the hand now. Oh, go ahead, Marcus. Yeah, thank you so much. This was so interesting to, to hear all these different views. Uh, at the Sibelius Academy, at the moment, I think the, the biggest discussion about the students' well-being, so of course, I understand well-being is a little bit wider subject that we are now dealing with, but maybe the, the biggest question now is uh, about the student's workload. So that's uh, the student union has raised up the, the question about students' well-being in connection with the student workload. And uh, I think this is a really huge thing. And, and there has been a big change in the, in the last years because now the students themselves, they, at least to me, it appears so that they are pretty much aware of, of the well-being factors. And they are refusing to have uh, to study in weekends, and they are refusing to study in the evenings. And uh, the way our teachers are are used to, to deal with this, that they think that all the sixty credits should be done in actually in fourteen plus fourteen weeks. So, all the fo forty weeks of workload should be actually put into into twenty eight weeks, which makes them really heavy heavy weeks. So now. I think we we are kind of challenged to to change the whole structure of of music studying, and I'm really grateful for our students that they raised up this question. But but this workload question is is something that we didn't touch today so much. But yeah, anyway, that was what I just wanted to share with you. Yeah, thank you. This is such a valuable uh, thought and also like related to the uh, sleep hours as well. And uh, this is uh, uh, connected a little bit to Lisa's comment uh, in that regards that uh, I very often I say or, or try to encourage our, our teachers that the wise thing that the teacher can say before the exam is to have a sleep, not to share your own experiences like, oh, during our times, like, oh, that these days when we were like awake uh, nights and nights and we're studying all together and uh, so that uh, these times are uh, over, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. And this is like that the teaching philosophy comes from uh, his or her own history or background, but it really needs to be re-evaluated if that's really beneficial these days okay our hour is coming to an end thank you so much elena for a super valuable contribution and to kari in uh, greece and to all our participants thank you so much for listening in we have a evaluation form which camilla will post in the chat uh, now that we hope that you will fill out. And if you want to contact us in Anmatox, you can email us anmatox at gmail.com. And if you have any ideas for topics that we should run, we are very happy to hear them. <laughs>